I've never ministered in Mississippi that I can remember. Or strangers of our family. Amen. And I'm glad yes. to be here with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to go ahead and open with the text, and then we'll jump into the message and the prayer. My husband called, and we prayed together for the service. He prayed for you. And I've been praying for you. And I know Kara has. Reverend McCoy has as well. And I come here today. I, I know. You know, I'm an evangelist. I'm supposed to whoop you up. <laughs> right? yeah. us, we're supposed to run out of here shouting and all that. And I'm, I'm believing that God's going to take us there. But I have a gravity in my spirit for the word of the Lord that he's pressed upon me that I've never spoken anywhere else. I've spent days seeking him for you at this meeting. And he's given me a word. And so I'm excited to share with you the message that we didn't coordinate with the music or even between us. But the night of the messages unwind and unfold. Jesus. Unwind and unfold. Jesus. We're going to read for our text John 11 and 44 in the New King James. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave cloth, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him, let him go. Anybody ready to come right out of that grave and hear the word? Life. 
I speak your release of the living water. Teaching with life. Move as you desire. God. For your glory. Amen. I got to pick up the pace that we're going to be here until tomorrow's Sunday school training meeting. I have a lot of things that I want to share, but I believe that God is here in this place. And he's ordained this moment, this intersection of our lives in his presence. I was going to be going to another meeting, and that's why I was going to be here. And then I decided at the last minute, you know, I really can't go to that meeting. I'm just running too much. But we were scheduled, and I said, you know what? I've got some points. I'm going to fly in, and I'm going to be there in this church because this is the will of God. Kara was already yes. going out. She was driving, and it wasn't that hard for her to drive on over, but I didn't want to drive, just drive on over from Michigan. <laughs> it's a long drive. Um, but God cares about what's going on here. And the yes. that led the singing, my tall, elegant, lovely sister, Woo! Could you feel the power? Come on. To be a child of the kingdom of God. Come on. Right. I had 
Oh, I had the most adorable baby. My husband was Armenian. You know, dark, curly hair, big old Disney eyes. Our babies. Oh, let me tell you. I had this little boy and he was born with eyelashes. I'm like, God, that is not fair. <laughs> these big, dark, curly eyelashes and dark hair and these luscious little cherry lips. And oh, I love carrying that boy around. But let me tell you, I would not want to carry him around today. He is six foot four. Come on. They sang those songs. 
Jesus understands our emotions. God always knew the emotions that we would feel because he made us. Yes, sir. Right. But then Jesus came. Yes. And he acquainted right. himself personally with sorrow Amen. Yes. and grief. You never have to be fake. I'm not talking about being fake. I'm not talking about fake it till you make it. I'm talking about being real with a real God Amen. who can really deal with yes. your mess and do a real change, a real
that they saw they believed so much they actually the 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 church folks tried to get Lazarus killed, the, the Jews, because the people, so many people were believing on him. Like, we got to take this guy out because this resurrection thing, he's got all these believers now. Jesus loves people. Amen. Jesus loves you. Yes, amen. Jesus loves me. That's right, amen. He laid down his life for us. He wants us to love him back right. with the same passion, yes. right. the same Amen. commitment. Love him with all your yes. heart, yes. all your soul, all your strength. God showed his love for us that while we were yet sinners, he died yes. for right. us. Amen. Jesus gave his life yes, it is. on Calvary. There's no greater love That's right. than this. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you. And me. Table. 
and him folding it up and putting it away or anything like that. It was just a piece of cloth. Just like a hanky, and they do what we do with their hankies. It was just a piece of cloth. Nothing special. It was the same word in hanky that, that it was used in Paul's day about the hankies that were set forth. They were anointed with oil and had a symbol of uh, God's spirit. Somehow, I don't know how it all works, but somehow the prayer or the spirit that gets soaked up in that cloth can go to where you send it and move on behalf and do a miracle. And so yes. I, I know that there's prayer clause here for you today. I believe that the, the power of the prayer and the spirit of the intercession that was offered under those yes. clause today that God can use them to do a miracle. Yes. I, I confess, they've been under my children's yes. mattresses. They're in yes. my top yes. shoes that they have in the house after they leave. Yes. Yes. I believe. Yes. I believe. And sometimes us mamas need something to just hold on to. I remember that prayer. I prayed and I felt the power and the release of the yes. Holy Ghost. And so you just hang on to whatever you go forward in faith and operate in the spirit. Do the things he speaks to your heart to do. Even if it's sticking a little piece of cloth under the mattress of your children's bed. <laughs> That's an act of faith, my friend. That's an act of faith. Yes. Joseph and Arimathea wrapped the body of Jesus in fine linen to protect it. He did what he knew to do in the situation. He did what he could do, and sometimes that's all we can do. That's right. This was not what I hoped for. This did not play out the way I expected, but what am I going to do? I'm just going to take care of what's happened. Other people were grieving in their own way, and some people cried, and others may have felt numb. Sometimes numbness is a gift from God. Some of them were shocked or dismayed, and I believe... Some of those disciples who've given so much might have even felt betrayed. Play for a fool for believing that he was the Messiah. But some of those same people watched Lazarus come out of that grave at the word of the Lord. They did not understand the plan of God. Yes. That's right. Joseph wound the body and set the hanky in place. It seems he didn't understand those weren't going to be needed. For long. Because Jesus was going to come out of that grave. What was there would live. The promises of God would be Oh. 
whole. I didn't feel loved or wanted. Between my parents, there were many marriages. And two of the men that were supposed to be father figures in my life did not treat me as a father should treat a daughter. I was hurt, I was broken, and I was ashamed. I went out on my own and became a cocktail waitress. And somehow, in God's great mercy, he extended his grace to me. He found me. He picked me up from a place where I was very desolate and I was in a place of moral and spiritual depravity. I tell people I was doing everything you don't want your daughter to do. He cleansed me. Amen. He forgave me. Right. He filled me with his spirit and he sent me in a beautiful church family. All I ever wanted growing up was a normal home. I don't know about you and your affection for math. Math is not my friend. I almost was late to the airport because I was calculating numbers wrong. Give me letters. But don't mix it with numbers. Because that's evil. And I, was, I remember being, what, third or fourth grade, and I was at Grandma's house, and I was like, Grandma, I don't need to learn fractions. I'm never going to need these in my whole life. <laughs> well, Lori, what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a mom. That's all I wanted. I wanted to have one man who loved me and our own children who knew who their mamas and daddies were and they didn't have to go somewhere else on the weekend or be with people that didn't really care about them and actually used and abused and hurt them. I just wanted a family. That's all I wanted. But after I got into church, God gave it to me. And then after seven years, it was gone. And he was dead. And my dream was dead. You can't go back. I can't go back. I can never have that nucleus family with my own children that I wanted. That was my dream. And I had to let it go. You can't live being bound by the grave claws of a dead tree. Right. One of the biggest lessons that I learned at that time is that God does not always give us what we hoped for. Right. He doesn't give us what we thought we were signing up for. Right. He doesn't always do things the way we expect. That's right. But he's still good. Yes, amen. And he still has good plans for his people. Right. Yes, and if he, he does. Did, I wouldn't be here with you That's right. today. I think the people in Jesus' day were experienced, uh, they, were, um, they were experiencing the, the unexpected. They did not expect this to happen. They were dealing with the death of a dream. The body of the one that they had pinned their hopes on was wrapped in linen and lying in a tomb, but not forever. Not forever. Man. And someday, the great trumpet is going to sound and the dead in Christ will rise first and those yeah. who are alive and remain are going to meet him in the air. Oh, what a glorious day that will be. They're not dead. They're just not on the dead. They're part of the great cloud. They're going to be with the Lord in the air. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
lives. Right. Yes, yes. You have to make the best right. of the life that you have. If you've got children that have broken your heart, you don't get to make their choices. That's right. That's right. But I'm not going to live under the weight of their choices. Right. That's right. Amen. Right. Come on. Make the best. The life God wants you to make the best of the life that you have. Not living in grief, not restrained by the things that are no more. When Lazarus rose from death to life, the people there assisted in the work of removing the stone and unwinding the grave falls. And I'm just going to stop right here and say that there's some women in this house today. And God is going to use you to unwind and unbind and set free people. He wants to use you. Who else is he going to use? Amen. He wants to use you. All we have to do is follow the voice and do what he has. When Jesus rose from death to life, the Bible tells us that an angel removed the stone and I just like to think about angels. You know, the Bible tells us that they're sent here to minister to the heirs of salvation. Right. Yeah. You know, I know that an angel came and the, removed the stone from the grave, and it made me think about the comparison between Lazarus and the resurrection tomb. The people removed the stone. Mm -hmm. The angel removed the stone. The Spirit, the Word of God came and brought life to the dead body. The Spirit of resurrection came and moved in that body and it came forth to life. Yeah. Happened in both places. Amen. In Lazarus too, the people removed the strips. Well, the people that moved the rock moved the strips. And I just think that ain't, there was angels. Come on. Amen. There were angels at the resurrection scene. We know it's true. We know they were there. We know they were even inside the grave. Yes. That's right. Now, I'm not making a doctrine of it. It's not in the book of Gloriology. <laughs> not, not, I'm not going to lose my credentials over my theology. I'm not making a theology. What I'm telling you is that there's really only two options here. The angels came and did a royal disrobe, or the Spirit of God just transcended through those clothes. Either way, it was supernatural. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, yeah. it was a miracle. Either way, hallelujah, God, we have a word. God has a word. And the Spirit of the Lord is here. And He's going to use you to pray. So He's going to see the bombs up on your sister. Or He's going to send an angel. And He's going to do it for you. Or maybe, just maybe today, the miracle moment in the presence. You don't even have to do it. 
when he says, come, you come. And the people will minister. The spirit will minister. The angel of the coast will minister. And you be free. Indeed. The Lord has sent me here today to tell you I've given you life. I've sent revival. I'm breathing life and energy to you, but know that I have not just come to make you alive. It's my desire that you should no longer be restrained. Amen. Be free from the losses of the past. Feelings of insecurity. Guilt for things that you've done or for things that people did to you. Be free. Amen. Feelings of shame and condemnation are not from me. My resurrection spirit lives within you. My life gives you life. Yes. Lay aside every restraint, every hindrance. Walk in the liberty. I have given We pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and his kingdom is here. And he wants to use us. He wants to unfold the beauty of his gifts, residence in his people. He wants to open up new doors of opportunity. He wants to do new things in our lives. He wants to see spiritual growth and transformation and new levels of greater full fruitfulness. But unfolding requires unwinding. I invite the musicians and singers to come. However God wants to do it. Maybe you walked in here with a magnificent hairdo and some fine stilettos that you were broken inside and hobbled in. Spiritually, God wants you to be free. Today I brought strips of fabric and I apologize in advance for the vacuuming that will have to be done later. And I want all the ladies to have one. You can use it, try to make them long for bookmarks. I want you to remember that God. He spoke life into you, and he wants you to live 